is just fantastic. Computer, initiate holodeck program Cucumber 01. Welcome everyone to Content Constable. Haven't done this in a while. Today we shall be reviewing the channel and <coughs> personality. It is quite a damaged one. Of the artist formerly known as Comedy Shorts Gamer, aka Deji Olatunji, aka KSI's little whiny brother. Now I had promised to do this video back when I finished Nikocado Part 2, but in truth I lost a lot of motivation. In that time, two fantastic videos have been made by John Swan and Nick DiOrio. I will link both down below. They successfully managed to convey a number of very key issues I took with Mr. Deji Tank. Does this mean that I shouldn't do this? No. I said I'd do it, and I will do this. As a longtime subscriber of Deji's, it has annoyed me to see so much potential wasted on petty vendettas, inaction, jealousy. Oh, and the tank situation really forced my hand. Does this mean I might not have anything new to add to the discussion? It's possible. But as this video will serve as my record of criticisms against Deji, I will make my points regardless. So how do I intend to frame this video? It shall not be, for the sake of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but instead based on character traits that are very much known within Comedy Shorts Gamer. So after we delve into who he is, i.e. a timeline, which would, I guess, include his rise and fall on YouTube, those behavioural traits will include the following. Jealousy towards his brother and any successes from those close to him. A lack of conviction, i.e. deleting his videos. His loss to Jake Paul, which does lead on to a discussion about cutting corners and commitment itself. Within this would also include the situation surrounding Tank, his former dog. And finally, intelligence, because he has shown on occasion that he does in fact have it. But more often than not, his poor decisions lead to many, many mistakes. We can just call those his diss tracks, which can be summarized with big dick energy and everyone's gay. With these categories, we should be able to best break down the online presence and content of Deji Olatunji. So let's dive right into the timeline. <laughs> Deji's earliest forays into YouTube fame can be attributed to featuring early on on his Bigger Brothers channel via FIFA games, scary games, skits, songs, and challenges. This, if anything, served as a catalyst for Deji to start uploading to the channel Comedy Shorts Gamer. His content lived up to that name, by the way, something his brother did mock him for in a clapback parody video. What video am I gonna do today? And that's it! Yep! A short video because I'm too lazy to do longer videos! Which does happen later on in Deji's career, and only happened because Deji mocked his brother. FIFA's life! FIFA's not a game! Welcome to Beast! One key feature in all of Deji's content is his family. There won't be any shots at those, I promise you that. The fact his family feature isn't inherently a bad thing. It just shows an over-reliance, though, on featuring family for creativity and content. Oh, and business management. We know this, as they used to manage KSI's accounts, which we only know about because of a diss track Deji did on Randolph. But the one thing you ain't been spreading is that JJ paid for your wedding. Whoa, whoa. Wait, that's out of order. Nah, nah, nah. Don't get me involved with this, fam. I'm just watching. That's, wait, that's on my parents, man. Mom, dad, I'm disappointed. Along with the fact that there used to be a whole plethora of tank merch boxes in the old house they used to live in. To get as far as he has, it has not been 100% controversy free, which for somebody of his channel size is impossible. Some are referenced in diss tracks between Deji and the Sidemen. Picture Deji Olatunji in a drugged up team. Now some of your fans might know who I mean if I said that he met her in Bethlehem. 
Techno Green, which happened shortly after KSI temporarily left. A fair chunk comes from the very fractured relationship with his brother, either via debates on drama alert. You must have been born on the motorway, because mm. that's where most accidents happen. Oh. Uh, uh, well, you're so black that the color black was named before you diss tracks or video essays which we'll get to later. There is a psychology to this, but as I'm no expert, I'll just mention that these behaviours are akin to a molly-coddled youngest child acting like a brat to his brother and constantly seeking parental approval. But again, I'm not an expert. Over the years, Deji changed content from short manufactured gameplay with very fluky pack openings and skits to challenges with family. He does make content with his current girlfriend and has called all ladies he's used in his videos girlfriend because clicks and views. He's also not shy in admitting his main drive is money, which is somewhat amusing for a guy who is renowned for being cheap. Also mentioned in Randolph's diss track, responding to Deji. Back in LA, I was paying for your taxis. You're the poorest rich man that I know. Every time your card comes out, decline, bro. Because Deji can get quite salty quite fast. Name a dead YouTube channel. Deji. He was for the longest time stuck at 9.9 .9 million subscribers. This is because certain external factors concerning his brother mostly led to a diminishment in his views and subscriber growth. Something did push it over, we'll get to it later, you know I will. So one of the ways he decided to tackle this was to rebrand from Comedy Shorts Gamer simply to Deji. So to kickstart this meek attempt at breaking down a channel because I are expert, we are going to start with the jealousy, as he has plenty of that, and it manifests in various ways over the many moons that Deji has been active on YouTube. No, I'm not going to bother with his Twitter or other social media platforms, because I want this video to be nearer to 30 minutes, not three hours. Ah! Just, just instant lie. I think we can all agree when it comes to the concept of jealousy, it is a remarkably fickle thing, typically stemming from the smallest of grievances, or imagined slights. And when it comes to someone like Deji, I can think of no better way to demonstrate this than by using the diss track he made on his brother with assistance and the fact he went on his at the time arch nemesis's podcast in the form of the impulsive podcast according to logan this is the bestest best best podcast on the planet it's not and i will admit i preferred the version done by lil board here's a taster of it could you take the jacket off please that man no. it's so hold, lame hold on bro I it is no. it's cool. I, I have a question, bro. What's up? So why are you why are you sitting here? Cause you know, you know I <laughs> my name is Deji. What did you mean by that? So what brought about Deji's decision to, against his brother's wishes, go on the impulsive podcast? Simple, really. He couldn't work out his differences with his brother, which all stemmed from the fact that Deji, while putting out a bunch of information out there that wasn't information but was in fact fake news, via some rather long videos that made a lot of people think JJ was a bad person when the majority of it was in fact debunked by JJ, because it turns out context is key and Deji's a pouty little bish. He went out to LA and he decided anyway to go talk to Logan. And I thought I'd play you some of the highlights. Here's what I will say. You're in good hands. I told you I'm not here to f anyone over. Yeah. And I want to pick your brain because here's why also this is significant. As many of you know, I've been through the same exact thing yeah. with beef with my brother mm. on the internet. Yeah. So I wanted to, to bring you in and I guess just talk to you about it because like as you know, like I said, I, I don't like your brother, but apparently yeah. you don't like your brother now either. Well, no, because this is like manifested. So I don't want to like go into full full detail, but it all kind of started off when uh like when I moved away from because we all we all used to like live in one house, you know, when we went was that, the, was that the Simon house? No, 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 no. So when I when we like moved out from that house, I think that's when it kind of started. He started just distancing. Yeah, distancing his, like, himself from the family. Like he has he has time to visit the family, but he would never just make the conscious like the conscious effort. 
it. Just the, why did you? Why did that affect you personally? Well, it's because he would always put his friends first. From that one clip, I have three points I'd like to make. The first one that was spliced down from three minutes of footage. The additional context is dead air and. That's not even a joke. I will link the full thing down below so you can get the full context. The second point. When you moved, Deji, your brother suddenly started to distance himself, which tells me you don't quite understand how it is quite a natural process for people to grow apart as time goes by. You are always there for family at some point when needed, but we all have to carve out our own lives. Yet to you, you didn't want anything to change. And the third point, your brother putting his friends first. Do you think your behavior towards him helped? Not just in like videos or anything. It, it would be, let's say his friends would say something about me and then JJ would believe them over me. Since your brother went on to go through a rather lengthy video you made and he debunked the majority of the points because of the out of context quotes, in an attempt to ostracize him from the world community of YouTube cringe, which is the community your brother hails from, it's not hard to believe your brother would start to believe others over you. That said, you are asserting this, as you have with other points so far. You never proved anything. In fact, all you did was prove that you are a cliché youngest child, and a considerably more petty version than is typically acceptable. Y'all were beefing. Yeah. The beef was equal. Yeah. And then KSI in the past two days or so was like, No, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, Which, you know, he, the reason he was like that is because he... People were seeing how he really was, how he was, had, like, been treating me and everything. Wow. He was even losing subscribers because of it. Yeah, so we'll admit it is quite impressive the complete and utter lack of critical thought from the vast majority of people who just saw what you said and believed you. Which is quite fascinating, because him, in retrospect, was only saying, I'm sorry, because he knew what would happen next if he actually clapped back. Which, when he did, undid your own videos. Which, by the way, with you acting so magnanimous in victory, only proves how utterly petty and jealous you are. But I'm going to play one last clip from this before we move on to the diss tracks. Did you did you tell him you were coming on this podcast? Uh, I did mention that you did uh, invite, invite me, yeah. but I never said I was going to come on. Here's what, he, here's what he tweeted. This is why I ask. Hi, at Deji. I know you're currently in LA planning on doing a diss track on me and considering going on Logan Paul's podcast. Bro, I'm actually trying to sort our situation out. This is our family, not entertainment. Please, can we keep this all private? Now, understandably, with the size of Deji's Twitter following, he's not going to see this. But let's focus on the actual point to take away from this. What was Deji's response? Now, do you know what baffles me about this whole situation? Like, who tweets out publicly? Facts. Let's keep the, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Who, let's keep I it private. I did not even think of That's that. A bit ironic for a person who's been dragging his brother through the mud publicly, don't you think? And you are, of course, playing the card of but my brother never would have tried to pick up the phone. If he had, I surely would have listened. Instead of what you should have done, of, oh, maybe I should leave. I don't think I should be here dragging my brother through the mud, which you then go on to do for the rest of your appearance on the Impulsive Podcast. Arrogance is quite unbecoming, especially when born out of jealousy, and a blind spot because you think you're always right. Which, as was proven later, you're not. So I guess we should now talk about that, uh, intelligence. And I guess we'll start with the diss track on JJ. My dick's big! Alright, piss off! Before we even get into the diss tracks themselves, it is worth conceding. Deji is intelligent. He has shown us such because he, like any person trying to grow on YouTube, has pounced on every trend and milked it dry. Which is what you should do if you want to not only grow, but also continue to prosper. With Deji though, the diss tracks stand out as the perfect example of piggybacking on another trend, but showing a certain lacking in capability. While it is intelligent to have your family help you, run a business, it is intelligent to use your brother for clout and other people for collabs. Not so intelligent to be the person that wrote your own diss tracks on people you just don't like. Minus all the crap! Which is what it was when you did one on the Sidemen, pouncing on the wrong people who did not even bother responding. Send this to me! 
Toby, the Black Pinocchio. And they so big it goes from here to Tokyo. A few moments later. Josh, I'll help you on the low down. I'll punch your teeth, but I'll make you look like Danny Brown. And spending far too much time clapping back at Simon. A lot of your comments within that very first diss track were quite amusing for a number of reasons. One, because you contradicted yourself by saying that Ethan likes to suck peen, and then he got a girl, which you reference a second later. Much of the rhythm and rhyme was quite dead. The rhyming itself quite precious because apparently you couldn't think of words that rhymed, so you just went with the more extreme, which made no sense at all. You also rail on someone like Ethan for having the thinnest pockets, which is somewhat ironic for a guy who forgets his wallet on a semi-regular basis, something which was rightly pointed out and you were railed for by Randolph after you couldn't take a joke. Back in LA, I was paying for your taxis. You're the poorest rich man that I know. Every time your card comes out, decline, bro. Remember. Or, and to further prove my point about your inability to think creatively, starting beef with me, you will regret that, just like vasectomy. Is there any point in me offering additional comment? Because while it does rhyme, what on earth does vasectomy have to do with the diss track? Starting beef with me? You'll regret that! I'm guessing this is a tad late to the party, but maybe you should have used the people that wrote Rice Gum's songs. Or Jake Paul's. You can tell which ones Jake Paul wrote, because they're like yours. Shit. In the last segment of this video, I referenced that we were going to dive right in to the diss track you did on your brother, but I wanted to show quickly the progression from your first diss track on the Sidemen, which I was right, you milked quite intelligently with reaction videos to each and every one of them, even reactions to their reactions, because them views, yo, can't begrudge the player, all the way over to the one you did on your brother, which after a discussion you did remove, but because you didn't get your own way, because that's pretty much how all this plays out, you republiced it along with a number of other videos. So while it is now not available on your channel, I did find it somewhere else, and I'm going to say this early, only two people sounded remotely good in this. You are neither of them. And I'm going to play a clip so you can fully understand why. JJ wanna play games, wanna snake me, get your friends on to battle me. battle me. Now they wanna bait names, how can a man choose friends of a family? Like, whoa, whoa, how could you block your bro? bro. Even block your mom and dad too? How could you be so low? Uh, when you got a girl to lick your instead of getting your Sorry. Let's see on the checklist. Uh, monotone delivery, fantastic. Priorities of the day, how dare you block us on social media, even though you used your parents to get bank statements, okay. You got your parents to take a side, okay. And you were the one dragging this all out publicly when your brother was trying to do it privately. Right, okay. To me, the only rational thing to do would be to block you out so he can try and figure out a way of going forward. Because apparently with his family, it was not an option. And I threw in the last one because it's somewhat amusing to shame someone about what they like to do in a bedroom when you earlier referenced a lack of dignity. Oh, and don't you see the irony in using this diss track to claim your brother chooses his friends over family when you went to his enemies to shame your brother? Who on earth is this, and why are they using a section in a video to diss JJ to brag about themselves? No, seriously, who is this? I'm going to save you all a lot of trouble by telling you how the rest of the video goes. Dax drops the N-bomb many, many times. He has the better flow of the three so far, but quite frankly, his insults are all humble brags about where he came from and JJ being inferior, because without Dax, he won't succeed. As you can tell, that aged really well, like a boxed wine in the sun. And the final person called Crypt, who I felt had the best all-out attack of getting faster and faster and faster and just throwing lots of abuse. Which I found to be quite entertaining of the four because I also had no idea who he was. 
I knew who Dax was, because if you didn't know, he was a janitor. When it comes to loyalty to family, Deji uses that as an excuse for his bad behaviour, and it is a level of arrogance to think you're always right, which is exactly what he did when he kept on doing this. And to unironically shame his brother for preferences in his life, and for his own poor decisions, is interesting when you then earlier mention that your brother shamed you and so did his friends when they used girls to try and diminish your credibility, when your credibility has been in the gutter for the best part of a decade, because half the stuff, if proven true, oh, you get cancelled, especially in current year. For Deji's lack of conviction, we have a whole plethora of sources we can cite so as to best demonstrate just how lazy Deji Olatunji is. You can start with the Jake Paul fight itself. Deji lost, which is unfortunate, but it was what happened before that really got on people's nerves. For example, he moved into the Sideman house. A boxing ring was installed in the house. The reason Deji moved in wasn't because he got kicked out by his parents. No, no, no. It was because his brother really wanted to train with him, something his brother referenced in a response video to him. My brother ended up kicking me out November time 2013. All right, so we offered you a room rent free in our house to help you with training. Where he also pointed out he was busy ordering takeaway. Our chef was making food while you were finding ways to not eat it or hide it or, or just throw it away. I kicked you out because you made our house disgusting. You never did any chores. You refused to listen to me when I repeatedly asked you to get rid of all the rubbish that you made from constantly ordering takeaways and never cleaning up after yourself. Bringing girls back to the house. Deji man, you were, you were constantly inviting random girls from Tinder and Bumble to our house. Then there's the reference from Randolph in a diss track to him because he got salty at one comment in one Sidemen video about having a dead channel, where Randolph pointed out, before the fight, Too busy taking edibles backstage just hours before That is something I cannot ignore Real reason you lost the fight Way too busy getting high Nice to see you trying to find another way to cut corners. Although I'm almost certain no sarcasm intended here, it was entirely to make sure you didn't defecate yourself because of the anxiety before the match. Another area of lack of conviction would come from the fact that when Randolph acknowledged your channel as dead, and long after the diss tracks, and you being a salty little boy to get those extra little views, your channel hit 10 million subscribers. Congratulations. But, as many people noticed, you gained subs but you didn't gain views. Yet somehow you had gained about 50,000 subscribers in a very short space of time, which led to an accusation of sub-botting, which only happened because you clickbaited COVID and lost a lot of subscribers, which you believed was entirely because of the bot subs that you bought, which then led to the very people who said that they had in fact got you the subs to confirm they had given you the subs. Hey, what's up guys? This is Thomas from freewaysocial.com. Many were wondering how did Deji got those 50,000 YouTube subscribers and reached 10 million subscribers milestone. I can confirm that he bought those subscribers and I can confirm that because he bought them from freewaysocial.com which is run by me. The next day Deji placed another order on 23rd of March for 40k subscribers. Both orders combined Deji should receive 50k YouTube subscribers and reach 10 million subscriber milestone. So, the next question is why I am disclosing Deji as FreewaySocial.com client. Well, the thing is that, as you may have noticed, Deji started losing YouTube subscribers right after reaching the 10 million mark, and he thought that these were FreewaySocial.com subscribers that dropped, and he opened a dispute on PayPal and got the most of his money back. Now, why would Deji do that? Because he was stuck at 9.95 million 
million subscribers for years because his viewership was going down, because he wasn't being promoted, because people weren't interested in his content, because he kept on dumping on his brother and people were getting sick of it. But the best example to exemplify your lack of conviction isn't all the drama you've caused because of the corners you've cut. It's actually something your brother himself has mocked you for. It's the fact that you can't make longer videos. A short video because I'm too lazy to do longer videos. Now, yes, you can attribute this to your own name, Comedy Shorts Gamer, now Deji. And yes, some of the content back then was short and amusing, if you ignore the fact that virtually all of it was a direct ripoff of what your brother had produced, whether that be pranks on someone, in your case, your father. Do you know the house you've been working on for two years? Yeah. Well, he called saying that it's, it's been burgled into. Yinka? Yes? Yeah, he spoke to you, did you? And the house was set on fire. Set on fire. A few moments later. Don't try, don't try to prank me, do it. I saw that piece of cloth, that was it there. Because you were too much of an introvert to go outside and do pranks, or whether it be piggybacking on your brother's success through FIFA pack openings by yourself spending heaps of money to have the flukiest pack opening videos known to exist. Whoa, team of the year! Week! Yeah, week! What? That was- Thank you, guy! Thank you! Do you know what? Look behind you right now! Granted, that is a formula many have used since then, getting multiple EA accounts because they can, but people did notice you doing this. Because, as you yourself have recognised, your main motivator on YouTube is money. Now, I can't hate the player for that. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it is clear, obvious, and apparent you are unable to come up with an original idea, going so far as to rely on your parents to make your channel a family channel but not a family channel, you show yourself as still being the cliche youngest child begging for the parents' attention, all the attention, but failing at it because everyone else has seen through it, which is why you have never been as successful as your brother, because he just did things. You sat around and watched, wondering why you didn't do things. Which I'm very much aware is a remarkably harsh thing to say, but your own history is against you. You only did shorter videos because you knew you couldn't do them longer, and the only times you've ever managed to stretch the videos to be longer was solely so you could insert additional ads into content. Again, can't take the player, but I can criticise the player for their motivations and what they produce, not why they produce it. I guess the last aspect of a lack of conviction that I should mention was your inability to train your dog, Tank. You've got a new dog, congratulations. I'm surprised you weren't put on a blacklist so that you couldn't own a dog. Because what happened was, your dog attacked somebody. Your dog should have never attacked anyone had you actually bothered to train your dog. You featured your dog in enough content. You certainly made your money back on that. But you did fundamentally fail Tank because you are lazy. So as we have reached the conclusion of this video, you may have noticed there is actually a lot more to this. So I'm going to offer up a challenge because I focused a lot on his relationship with his brother for this. If this video hits 5,000 likes, I will do a part two and I won't focus on his relationship with his brother, instead focusing my energies on other aspects of his content creation. And as one last point when it comes to Deji as a character, to best try and garner sympathy, he has gone so far as to cry on camera, claiming he is not what everyone says he is, when he has been proven to be that. It is demonstrably true. It's been proven so many times, those tears, they go really well with ice cream, okay? And the final thing I want to say in this video is Gabby Hanna, you're next.